In this video, we'll be learning how to traverse the dungeons, moving up and down floors. And to start, we're going to go ahead and import two new images, one called Character Information and the other Level Up. Links can be found down below in the description. Once they've been imported, we're going to open up our tile palette, expanding the Deja Vu sprite sheet, and we're going to import both the less than and greater than symbols. We'll be using them as our downstairs and upstairs. Lastly, opening up the scripts folder, we're going to navigate to the components folder and create the level. From here, we're going to head back into the entity folder, double clicking controls. We're going to add a new action called info, setting its binding to C. Now opening up the Save Manager script, we're going to be implementing temporary saves as we want to move across floors without committing to anything. So in the Save Game parameters, we're going to add a boolean called temp save, setting it to true. Before adding an if statement, with this condition being temp save false, now moving into the load game method, we're going to cut out lines 78 to 86 creating a new method called load scene. This will be a public method that has a boolean parameter called can remove player with it being set by default to true. And if we're going to paste that previously cut code to fix our error, we're gonna go into the load state method, give it a parameter of boolean can remove player and adding it to the game manager call. Heading over to the game manager script, we're gonna add in a new method called refresh player which just calls the player's update field of view method. Scrolling down to the save state, we're going to get rid of this if statement of entities.containsItem as it was producing a duplication bug. We're then going to, within the load state method, add in a new parameter of boolean can remove player, cutting out its if statement, leaving a new method called reset, passing in can remove player in its place, and also adding it to the load entity states. Scrolling just below the entity states, we're going to add in the reset method, which as you can predict, takes in a boolean, uses our if statement of entities.count is greater than zero, using a for each to go through every single entity within entities, which uses an if statement to check if we can remove the player and if a certain entity has the player components, which simply uses continue if true, otherwise it destroys the entity game object. Once the loop is complete, it checks to see if the can remove player is true within an if statement, clearing both entities and actors. Otherwise, it simply removes every single entity or actor besides the player. Now within load entity states, we're going to add a new Boolean parameter called can place player, a new if statement within the if statement that checks if the entity state type is an actor, where if the entity name is player and the can place player Boolean is set to false, it will set the player's transform position to the entity state's position before refreshing the player and incrementing entity state before continuing. Within the else if statement, we're going to be checking that the item state's parent equals player and also checking if the can place player boolean is set to false, incrementing entity state if true before continuing. One last thing, heading on over to the top to on screen loaded, we're just going to add a true to the load state call. Now opening the map manager, we're going to add in two new tile base variables for our downstairs and upstairs, while also providing them getters. Now scrolling to on scene loaded, we're going to add a true boolean to the generate dungeon call, because, heading to the generate dungeon method, we want to differentiate between a current game and a new game. So adding a new parameter boolean called is new game, which has a default of false, we're going to add that boolean to the generate dungeon proc gen call before creating a new if statement of not equal new game at the bottom, passing into it a game manager.instance.refresh player call. One last step before we leave the generate dungeon method, we're also going to add a new, a new if and else statement with the if statement condition being floor map cell bounds size x is greater than zero, which if true calls the reset method, which scrolling down which is pretty self-explanatory, it clears every single list and dictionary before clearing every single tile map of all their tiles. Heading back up, and if it's false, it just as usual instantiates rooms, tiles, and visible tiles. One last thing, heading to our load state method, just like the generate dungeon method, we're going to add the same if statement for adding a couple of else if statements 
checking for both our upstairs tiles and downstairs tiles. Now heading to rectangular room, we're going to add in a new helper method called random point. The random point method uses an arrow function to return a new vector to int, which passes in a random dot range of x plus one inclusive and x plus width minus one exclusive for its x value and random dot range passing in y plus one for its inclusive and y plus height minus one for its exclusive for its y value. Now opening up procgen script, we're going to add in the new boolean of is new game to its parameters before scrolling down, exchanging our entity creation for the player with the following. We're first going to set the downstairs tiles using a random point before getting a vector three int of player pause for creating a new local vector three int variable called player pause, which is set to a random point within the first room that's been hard casted with vector three int. We then use a while loop that uses the get actor allocation method passing in player pause, checking that it's not null. If there is an actor in that location, then it gives a player pause a new random point until the get act at location call returns null. We then set the upstairs tile using player pause before using an if statement checking if it's not a new game, which will set the player's position to the player pause position accounting for the tile. Else, it creates a new player passing the player pause. That's been hard casted with vector two int. All right, moving over to our level scripts, it's time to implement our code. We're going to add a required component type of actor attribute to the top of the class before adding in six int variables called current level setting to the default of one, current XP, XP to the next level, level up base with a default of 200, level up factor with a default of 150, and XP given. We're going to provide current level, current XP, XP to the next level, and XP given with getters while also providing a setter for XP given. An onValidate method will be used to set the, to the return of XP to the next level, a helper method that first multiplies the current level and level up factor before adding it to level up base. We next have a method called requires level up, which returns a boolean based on current XP greater than equal XP to the next level. The add XP method takes in an int parameter called XP, uses an if statement to check if XP is equal to zero, or level up base is equal to zero, returning true if so. If it isn't, it proceeds to add the XP to current XP, calling the add message method from our UI manager, before lastly using an if statement, if its condition being because level up is true, calling UI manager's toggle level up menu method, passing in the actor components. We'll get to this a bit later in the video before finally the method calls UI manager's add message method to indicate that the player has advanced the level. We didn't have four more methods, the increase level method being private, which sets the current XP to zero, increments the current level, and sets XP to the next level variable to the return of experience to next level method. Increase max HP, increase power, and increase defense all have a parameter that takes in an amount, with the first being set to 20 by default, and the last two set to one by default. The amounts given are used to set the specific variables of each method. All three methods make use of the amount parameter to increment their specific variable before calling UI manager's add message method before calling increase level. Finally, we implement both a save state method and a load state method, which both saves and loads the current level, the current XP, and the XP to the next level. Of course, both these methods be using a level state, the level state class containing three integers, current level, which is set to one, current XP, and XP to next level. All three variables have their own getters and setters, followed by a constructor. Now open the actor script as we want to support our new level components, starting with adding a new level variable, and again, instead of for both the fighter and level variables, a new if statement to on the validate method for the level components, heading over to the actor state class, add in a new level state variable, a getter and setter for it, followed by adding a new parameter to the constructor, and also adding a new line of this dot level state equals level state. Scroll up to save state. We're going to add level state is set to using a ternary level not equal null and get player is true, setting it to level dot save states return, else setting it to null. Before in the load state method, adding another if statement just like the fighter state, only for the level state, where it calls levels load state 
quickly heading over to the fighter script, we're going to add a new getter and setter for the max HP variable, followed by adding a setter to both defense and power. Then within the die method, we're going to add to the else statement gameManager.instance.actors, the index of zero, which is the player, we're going to get its level components before calling add experience, which passes in the level components XP given int variable, which is attached to the same game object as this fighter script. All right, heading on over to the UI manager script, we're going to be adding support for three new UI elements, which is our dungeon floor text, our character information, and our level up elements. So adding a new text mist pro U GUI variable, then we hit dungeon floor text, we're going to head on down. And following the trend, we're going to add in a Boolean to support our menus, followed by a game object. However, we're going to also add another game object for our level up menu, as we need to support its content. Add a getter for the character information menu before once again scrolling down. We're going to add a helper method called set dungeon floor text. This will have a parameter of int floor. We will be setting the dungeon floor text dot text component to to dungeon floor colon using string interpolation. We'll be changing the start function to instead of using an arrow function, it's going to set dungeon floor text to the current floor within the save manager instance before using an if statement to check if the save manager's save dot save floor variable is zero, calling add message to welcome the adventurer to yet another dungeon, else it calls add message welcoming the player back. Moving on down, you will notice that all these toggle methods all have something in common, with is menu open being set to the active self of the menu, and the menu's active state being set to the opposite of itself. So we're just going to go ahead and implement a new method called set booleans. This will be a private method, and will take in a game object of menu and a boolean of menu bool. Well, the is menu open boolean is set to menu bool, with menu's active state being set to menu bool. Just going to implement it in the toggle methods, that out of the way, I'm just going to get rid of the if condition of is menu open before adding a new method called toggle level up menu. This method has an actor parameter called actor. It follows the trend of setting the boolean to the opposite of itself before calling set booleans, passing in its menu and the boolean itself. Three game objects, all consisting of the child game objects within our level up menu content. More on that soon. It gets all the components of the text message GUIs for those elements, getting their text before using string interpolation. It sets the text according to what child object it's on with the constitution button being set to a constitution bracket plus 20 HP from then passing in actor.getComponentFighter max HP. The same process is continued for the next two buttons, but each using different variables. We then use a for each going through every child transform within the level up menu content dot transform, where we remove every listener within the child's button components. We then add a new listener based on the child game object itself, where if the constitution button variable equals the child.game object, it adds the listener actor.getComponentLevel increase max HP before using else if statements going through the same process where if it's the strength button then it calls increased power or the agility button calling increased defense instead. As a safety we use an else statement to use debug.log error saying no button found. Finally it calls toggle level up menu passing an actor as we want the menu to close when a button has been selected. Lastly we use event system dot select a game object setting it to level up menu content. Moving on to our next method which is toggle character information menu, where it has a parameter of actor called actor with a default of num. It follows the same Boolean process before using an if statement, checking if actor is not null before saying every child game object will be part of our character information menu UI game object. We use an if statement to check actor is not null before setting every single child game object within our character information menu game object, getting their text mesh pro UGUI components setting their text to the player's stats. The first game object being the level sets its text using string interpolation to level colon space actor.getComponent level getting its current level. The second XP going for the relative of the same process except it gets current XP instead. XP for the next level uses the XP to next level variable and the last two attack and defense gets the actor's fighter components power and defense. Heading to our save method due to our changes we're going to be setting this to false as if the save button is pressed, we want to inform the save manager that it's not a temporary save. We'll also add a call to add message that the world stops for a moment before doing the same for the load method. Scrolling up to toggle menu, we're going to add a new case for our character information menu. 
Before moving over to the player script, here we'll be making a couple of slight changes where we're going to move the else if statement of target mode within our on exit method to the top. This is to correct the menu behavior issues within the game before moving to the on confirm method where we're going to be adding an else if statement that checks the boolean return of can act before calling action not take stairs action, passing in our actor component, an action that we'll be taking a look at shortly. We're then going to be adding a new method called on info, which like the others has a parameter that takes in the input action dot callback context. Within it, we use an if statement that checks context dot performed is true. If so, another if statement is used checking the return value for can act is true or UI managers is character information menu open is true, which leads to calling UI managers toggle character information menu passing in an actor component if so. Opening the action script and importing Unity engine dot scene management we're going to add in our new take stairs action method that we saw earlier, which has a parameter of actor called actor, where upon being called, it creates a vector three int called pause, setting it to the value provided by floor map dot will to cell, which we pass into the actor's transform position. It then creates a local string variable called tile name, which is set to return string provided by floor map dot get tile, passing in pause dot name. And if statement is then used to check if the tile name is not equal to either the upstairs tiles name or the downstairs tiles name, which if true, it calls UI managers add message method, saying that there are no stairs here before returning. Else, if there are stairs there, it then checks to see if the save manager's current floor equals to one and that the tile name equals the upstairs tiles name, which will call UI managers add message method again to notify the player that a mysterious force prevents them from going back before calling return. This is done because currently there's nothing implemented for a player to leave the dungeon. However, if both checks fail, it moves on to saving the player's instance, which we're using the temp save before incrementing or decrementing save manager's current floor by using a ternary to check if the tile name equals the upstairs tiles name, decrementing the current floor by one, else incrementing it. And if statement says and used to check if a scene exists within the save that equals the floor number, calling save manager's load scene passing in false, else it calls game manager's reset method passing in false before calling map manager's generate dungeon method. We then send the call to UI manager's add message before also calling its set dungeon floor text, passing in save manager's current floor. Now within the Unity editor, we're going to go into our resources folder, open up our canvas prefab, Within the canvas, we're going to create a new TextMess Pro object, call it Dungeon Floor. Set the default text, move it to the bottom left corner, just below our HP slider, and size it to your preference. Making sure to set the anchor to bottom left. Now we're going to be implementing the character information menu. So within the canvas, create a new image object, give it the source image of our character information menu. Move it to the top left, setting its anchor to the top left also, and just size it a little bit. Just going to name it character information within the hierarchy. And we're going to give it a text mesh pro text object. Name it level. We're going to set its anchor to top left. Auto size, style to Roboto, its character spacing to 30. And we're just going to expand it to the right. We're making the text a bit smaller. Duplicate it four times before giving it a default text of level, colon, space one. Then the others are the following. XB, giving it a default text of XB, colon, zero. Required XB, giving it the default text required XP colon zero and repeating the same for the last two, which is attack and defense. Separate them from each other. And that's our character information menu done. Just go ahead and turn it off. Moving on, we're going to be adding in our level up menu game object. So if in the canvas, we're going to create a new image UI game object, name it level up menu, set its source image and move it to the top right corner. Setting its anchor to the top right. Just going to stretch and size it to my tastes. Give it a child text object. Its text being, congratulations, you level up. Select an attribute to increase. Set the auto size. Spawn asset to Roboto. 
We're also going to give it a character spacing of 25 and a word spacing of 50, setting it to the middle alignment. Next, create a new game object within the level up menu, call it level up content, set it to stretch, it's left to zero, right to zero, and just moving it ever so slightly down. Now give it a button child object within the content. We're going to remove the text child object within it, also removing its image before adding a text mesh pro component to it. Set the target graphic to the text mesh pro by dragging in the component and set the anchor to top. Now adjust its position. And we're going to stretch it to the right. We'll then as usual, set its font asset to Roboto Select auto size, set its character spacing to 30, before duplicating it two other times. Adjust their positions, and rename them to constitution, strength, and agility. Selecting the constitution object, we're going to set its text to constitution plus 20 HP from 30. The strength object to strength plus one attack from five and the agility object to see agility plus one defense from two. We're going to make the buttons a bit more responsive by showing color changes depending on how the player interacts with the button. And with that done, we're going to close the level up menu component, setting its boolean to false, before selecting canvas, adding our dungeon floor game object to the dungeon floor text text mission GUI variable within our UI manager, Character information to character information menu UI. The same being done for level, both level up menu and level up menu content. Now selecting the orc player and troll prefabs, we're going to add a level component to them before selecting orc and setting its XP given variable to 30 with troll being set to 100. Now opening the scenes folder, we're going to open the dungeon scene, select map manager and set both the upstairs tile and downstairs tile. Upstairs being less than, and downstairs being greater than. Make sure to save the scene, and proceed back to the main menu. Now pressing play, let's test out if everything works. Pressing C. Moving to the next level. Level up menu seems to work fine. And we're done. A big thank you to H Regal for being the first sponsor to help support my projects. Cheers for that. Like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and comment if you have any questions. I'm more than happy to answer them. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.